is Julian Reyes live from Austin Streets. We're finding out what's going on with the homeless today. All right, well, I uh, hope everything's peaceable. So, uh, just one police officer. Just one. This is what happens in Austin. This guy's stuff was right here. They didn't get it all. They left his bed and stuff. This is what the homeless... Um, sometimes there's some like, cleaning products and some lotions. There's a hairbrush, a pair of jeans, a blanket, and a mat. Now, the homeless tell me they're living on this concrete. My friends have mentioned that the uh, concrete actually takes minerals out of your body and it hurts your, your body. I believe it definitely hurts your joints to lay there. And you can also stay up here. Because uh, the wind, if it's crosswind, it'll get you here. You're better off in the middle right there. Um, this is something you need to know uh, for your own survival and for your kids. They may end up homeless one day and need to know how to survive. And you don't want them uh, getting out in the elements and, and taxing their, uh, their uh, strength and immune system. Um, anyway, so... Yeah, the, the homeless tell me that uh, there's a lot of oppression that goes down here. There was an Officer Smith that used to beat people up in the middle of the night. He would sleep under these bridges in his car during the day, and at night he would go out and he would he would beat the shit out of uh, out of homeless people, men and women. And uh, instead of uh, waking them up normally, he would just start beating on them. He would take all this stuff here, he'd put as much of it in, especially the personal belongings like IDs and family photos and things you need. He would put them in the back of his trunk and take him to a faraway dumpster so the homeless couldn't get him again because he hated the homeless so my problem is is not the, um, the police protecting these guys actually um, as much as uh, the police should be protecting all citizens not just the uh, ones that work for the state um, I don't really think that the police and the that just because you have a badge or or name tag makes you uh, gives you more rights than any other citizen the only reason I wear this name tag here for the Challenger News is to have to be credentialed press of some sort to let the uh, police know that I'm not I'm not the one that they can just uh, mess with immediately. Um, but they should already know that because in the APD police policy and the, the First Amendment and all the uh, right to film police and government officials uh, cases in the. Uh, maybe as home marker, um, that they, we have the right to film, all of us, under the Constitution and under the, under the law, and the police have absolutely no right to interfere with this or handle this. But I can tell you from my many arrests and beatings and, and uh, tickets and other, other harassment, these cops, and the, from the cops' own mouths, uh, 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 Officer Smith downtown, it's a different Smith, by the way, uh, young guy, he, uh, Officer Smith downtown said that that they don't really have to follow the, the policies and the laws. They're just guidelines. They just do as they like. So basically, these cops are out of control, and we're going to send them out to to deal with mobility impaired veterans and poor. Um, yeah, this is not how we want to police. This is not what the, the mayor told me they were going to do. Um, and there they go. Right. My language, but he gets a kick out of having these. Uh, like, this is the city of Austin, and this is the Easter Seals coming, and they take everybody's stuff. Like, see, and then and I have these friends right now coming to get me out of there because there's no ramps where I'm at, right? Yeah. So I can't move till I. It's get hard to get there. Yeah. You I get stranded. Move. You get yeah, islanded right, there. Yeah, exactly. And so people have to bring you stuff. Oh uh, yeah, they have to. I have to find somebody to come get me off of there. You know. What, what's your uh, handle or what do you go by? 
I'm just Rick. Rick? Yeah, I'm like, my name's Rick. What's your name? I'm Julian. Julian? Julian. So, that cop, what was that, what did the cop say, or what did the cop do? Uh, he knows me. I've known him for a bunch of years already. So he's a known bad cop? Yeah, he gets a kick out of having, come in with Easter Shields, or either, he's either with Easter Shields or Techstat. Techstat this and time. And they said they won't take my stuff. The last couple of times he's been there, and I've been there, and I was there right now, I talked to him, and I talked to him again. He said, no, we won't mess with your stuff, which that's... Your stuff there. there. I mean, I don't know about all of it, but I you got a like your stuff there and the stuff on this end and the lotions and right. all that stuff's there. They didn't, but right. they, that doesn't mean they're going to do that for everybody. Uh, no. What would they do for a young What's person up? that's able? Like they're going to like throw their right. stuff away and make yeah. them move away, right? Yeah. You don't get to take your yeah. stuff. Yeah. So that officer told. I said, I drove by and I saw the cops going through here, and then right. I saw them messing with you, but I couldn't park, right. Right. and then. Uh, uh, I see them up on the top now. They're up there. Oh, yeah. But um, and I told that guy down there. I saw the panhandler down there. I told him they're coming. He, he says eyes got really big, and he was re he was like, okay, like thank you, yeah. thank you. I didn't give him any money. I just yeah. gave him knowledge, right. and he was happy because he knows yeah. what's up. Yeah. The rest of these people, <laughs> they just think it's normal day to day. Oh, no big deal. That problem, yeah, that person's right. probably over there attacking somebody. Yeah, right. Right? right? Isn't that what they think? Yeah. To yeah. justify oppression, they think that we're doing something wrong, yes. or that exactly. God doesn't exactly. love us because we're poor. Yeah. Or God doesn't love us because we're sick. There's people raised that way in church, and those aren't real Christians. So, anyways, so what is uh, what did the officer say that you were gonna get arrested if you didn't leave, or why did they why did they make you leave? No, no, no. I just left because I had somebody there to come get me off that island right now. Oh, okay. So it just and coincidence. They, and they promised them too, which you know they heard that they wouldn't take my stuff. See, I told them, I'm sorry, guys, but you all go do whatever you gotta do, right? But I can't leave right now because if I leave, these guys are going to take my stuff. Yeah. But they promised them, and Barbosa told me, no, we're going to mess with your stuff, but we're taking all the trash. I'm going to take the trash. I've been yeah. wanting to find somebody to bring me a heavy-duty trash bag where I can set it, it out all of myself. You know? Set it out or yeah. something, or or have somebody take it. Yeah, exactly. Put it in one of these dumpsters. I could do it myself, you know. Just yeah. Put it on the side over there, and somebody will pick it up. Yeah. They don't want us cleaning up the trash. I had a friend that cleaned up the yeah. trash in the green yeah. belt, yeah, and they, they tried to arrest him. Yeah, he was getting picking up other people's trash and putting it in bags, and they said, whoa, whoa, what's all this? And they were going to give him a ticket or arrest him or something. So Barbosa, um, what kinds of stuff does he arrest the homeless? Does he do anything to the homeless like uh, Smitty used to? Uh, Smitty and coffee? Like or, me, you know, he knows me. He's known me for a bunch of years. So... You know, I used to be a heavy duty drunk, right? Used to? Yeah, I used to. Awesome. <laughs> awesome, I don't dude. Drink like that anymore. Awesome. Yeah. Good job, man. That's fucking like yeah, yeah. quitting heroin, they say. Yeah. yeah. Like drinking, you know, that was a tough one. <laughs> cigarettes are next. Yeah, cigarettes. And I nice. freaked us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Live a little longer. Maybe another week, you know? Another week, you never know. Yeah. But I gotta have a cigarette. If nothing else, I gotta have a damn cigarette. <laughs> I look for a snap on the ground if I don't have a cigarette. I quit. I used to. I quit them all. I quit it all. How long ago? Uh, four or five years ago, maybe more. I was at Rudamaya hanging out with people that were smoking and drinking and drinking coffee and didn't care about their bodies. And I was always tired and I didn't have energy. And I'm like, but I got all this hot, hot, like high strength coffee. Why am I always tired? Because it wears you out like a battery. You can't run all day like this. You know how meth heads and crack heads do. They end up sleeping for a week. You can run like that for a while, but you're like the Energizer battery. Actually, your body's going to say enough is enough. Yeah, and so I just said, you know what? What if I, instead of going like this, what if I just go like this? Yeah, exactly. How would I would I be normally, like yeah. without this caffeine? Yeah. And the, the coffee and cigarettes, of course, make their depressants and make you tired sometimes. And so I quit all that and the high fructose, but I'd already quit the high fructose corn syrup. Right. But that's not high fructose, is it water? This is, no, this is uh, Pepsi. Oh, Pepsi. Yeah, I quit that stuff. You don't even drink Pepsi, soda water? Not usually. I might on occasion like, okay, so this old doctor, he's like maybe in his 80s or 90s now. He's an old, uh, he was a chiropractor of mine, right. old Texas chiropractor. Yeah. He told me, listen, son, here's the deal with sodas. We used to have one on, we used to have a Coke on Saturday. Yeah. 
whatever y'all are doing, where y'all are doing this all day long, that's yeah. not the way it was. So you guys are out of control. So you, I, I don't have a preset. I don't have a problem with the Coke on Saturdays, but if you're going to drink them all day long, it, you know, it's got phosphoric acid, which pulls calcium out of your bones. It yeah, makes my mom, you... My mom used to drink nothing but Coke Yeah, it no takes problem. calcium out of your body. She got kidney stones. Yeah. So that calcium came out of her body into her urine and got caught up in her in her bladder. Yep. Or in her kidneys, I mean. It, her up bad. it hurts bad. This it hurts as bad as yep. having a baby for a guy, they say. The closest, so that's why I'm like, no no, I don't want to go through that. I don't want to go through that at all. I've heard some women talk about it and I'm like, I don't want no part. I don't want no pain. <laughs> it starts like you get a little bake uh, a backache right here in your back. And then it'll grow, and then it, like by the end of the day, you won't be able to move, and you'll need someone to drive you. So, like you won't be able to walk or do nothing. You'll just be. I can't even walk. Yeah. So, so you can still roll, but you'll be in more pain. You may not yeah. be able to roll even. Yeah, I don't. I don't have the strength. Everybody thinks I'm so got upper body strength because mm -hmm. I had this one leg, right? Well, I mean, I had this one leg. This was a bad infection where they had to take it off because oh, of man. gangrene. I caught gangrene real bad, it spread all over my You almost body. died. Yeah, I almost yeah. died. My tongue was swollen to the size of my mouth. It was choking me to death. <laughs> it's a good thing I made it to the hospital when I did, or I wouldn't be here right now. But anyway, on those crutches, man, I could get anywhere. You know, I could cut across, jump over fences. With one leg? Over. Yeah, with one leg. Yeah. I was fine. But now I'm screwed. <laughs> I'm totally dry. islanded over there yeah, until someone comes yeah, and helps yeah, like, you. Who is it that comes and helps you? Uh, the church? Right now, David showed up, thank God, that David, he's from a church. Yeah. He showed up. I mean, I usually don't talk what to him. What church? He's, uh, he's, I don't know what they call this little church out here down the feeder road. There's a little church right up there, up the road. They feed oh, them. yeah. Um, Near the church. Verizon and all that. Yeah. Okay, I think I've seen it. Church of the Light, Eternal Light, or something long, right? I'm not sure the name of it. Yeah. He goes there a lot. What about the um, Sunrise? Sunrise, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, the Pastor Mark and everybody else is over there. Are they? They're pretty cool. They help people. I heard that the police were uh, through the streets because I got, you know, Dynamite. I know some people, Dynamite and Chris, you know, and different people. I've known people that lived out here for years. Yeah, I know Dynamite. Did you ever know Monster? Yeah, new monster. So Monster was a friend of mine. He went home and he, he died went to. There. He died yeah, he died. of alcoholism. I don't know what, I don't know what. Man, but he, he was a good man. He, he was huge. His mom died, right? And she left him her house. So he went to inherit her house and everything. He saved her. He took Amanda, right? I don't know what happened to Amanda. The last, okay, when he went to Chicago, back to Illinois. At Rock Island, yeah. Uh, he was, uh, Amanda was in jail, man. So she was because she got she was mentally back. ill. She was mental because yeah. the st state took her kids. That yeah. that makes a woman crazy. Yeah. It's different for women than men sometimes. Well, when he left, when he went back up north, she was in jail, <coughs> and I never knew. I never after he left, and then I heard that he died up there. No, oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to ask ago. Valerie. Yeah, that's been years ago. Monster died. He was a friend of mine. And God, I'm glad that he like, went home. Like about four years ago, five years, almost five years. Long time, yeah. It's been a while. So yeah, I heard on the streets. Was a very good friend of mine. <laughs> cool. So cool. I hear on the streets that the sunrise, the police have said they don't want anybody to stay out there anymore, and that's basically a rehabilitation church, and they're they're yeah, they helpful. Have, like, Tuesdays they have some kind of rehab thing. Uh huh. Like a. Yeah. Or whatever ails you, right? You're okay, good. Or drug addicts, whatever. Yeah. It's like a a and a kind of thing. Yeah, a lot of God stuff. <laughs> But uh, they let people stay there. They used to, right? Uh, now they got, but I don't understand, man. It's a church and there's a school. Listen up, cops. All the cops in Austin and you too, Barbosa. I don't want to hear anybody messing with Rick Garcia. Rick Garcia, he's a good man. He's just misunderstood and homeless and mobility impaired. You leave him alone, Barbosa. Be a good man. Treat people right. Others will treat you right. That's all. Namaste. Namaste, y'all. Be safe. Film the police.